Now, without further All right. ado, Anthem! let's talk about Anthem. Finally, finally, this is what I've been waiting for. I like those two indie other, those two other indie games, but the gods vanished. Okay, here it is. And left our world in chaos. Did you say the gods banished? Creating, altering, <laughs> destroying. <clears throat> the anthem is all that remains. Hmm. The anthem. Oh my gosh, this is giving me so much Destiny vibes. Oh, get wrecked. These walls can't protect us forever. Calm down. Not here for your money. <laughs> Diesel, thanks, dude. Aw, uh, this is so cool. Like, you just, like, rocket propel yourself into, like, into the environment. I think that's really neat. This, that's literally the like the destiny area, like the bridge and everything. Forgot what it's called. It wants to destroy us all. <clears throat> oh yeah, I remember that underwater section. A lot of crazy shit going on right now. Hopefully we get to see gameplay, not just this trailer. That'd be pretty neat. close <laughs> I was about to say like that's the worst way to go out anthem hey that was longer than a 30 second trailer uh, are we getting any more please um ooh you just saw the HUD there for a second <clears throat> Are these all the different classes? How cool was that trailer? You guys oh, no. it a couple times, and it's still cool every time I see it. So I know all of you, like me, have had tons of questions about Anthem since last year because we're all Bioware fans. So we're I mean, I, I wouldn't go that far. For the rest of the show. <laughs> I'm a fan of video games. Dive into Anthem. So I'm going to bring out some members of the Bioware team to chat with us. Ladies and gentlemen, please give a warm welcome to Casey Hudson, Mark Dara, and Kathy. Ooh, Rizzard. Casey Hudson. That's a big name. <clears throat> General manager, executive producer, lead writer. One, two, three. Four. All right, thanks guys. Thanks for coming out today. Just yeah, got a little game to show, right? Yep. Lots it's fun. gonna be very exciting. So Casey, we're gonna go ahead and just jump right in and get started with you. So now, okay, so this is basically just a Q and A now. Or Casey, you started your career. I want to see gameplay. Way back in the day, but you yep. took a couple. That's years so off. much to ask. But before you came back, you actually worked on Anthem before you left. Yeah, that's right. Um, so, you know, first of all, it's amazing to be back. It's awesome to be making games for Bioware fans. You know, we have the best fans. Uh, so it's been super satisfying to come back to it. And, you know, I just want to be able to continue the legacy of the studio. And that's kind of where it started with Anthem, is just thinking about, you know, <clears throat> oh, what is the evolution This is of the exclusive Bioware gameplay, game? guys. We wanted to create a brand Like that right there on the screen. To discover, you know, a whole new world of story and character. But we also wanted to do something that was, you know, more of a dynamic and living world, a game that would change every time you came back and played it. Hmm. We also wanted to do something where, you know, if you wanted to invite your friends into it, then you could do that as well. So that was really the initial vision of the game, not an MMO, not a multiplayer game with story sort of bolted on this hey, side. Hey, that's good. something new and different. That's and I good. Think the team is really captured Not an MMO, over the years. not multiplayer with story really tacked on. I love the stories from Bioware, but... I think we're kind of curious how you're planning to make story work in this shared world. So a great story for Bioware is really about characters that you can have a connection with, um, choices you get to make, and feeling like the story is about you. In a lot of <coughs> multiplayer games, those things get diluted because you're mixing multiplayer and storytelling into the same areas. Okay. Now you can build a solution to that, but you're really not really build so it into cool the core of the game. And that's what we've tried to do with, with Anthem. It's what we call our world, my story. So when you're out in the open world, the world is really dangerous, and you're focused on your mission. And this is where other players get to play with you. The thing that's really interesting about this 
that's unique for, uh, for <coughs> Anthem is that this is a living shared world. So whether there's weather, or, <laughs> whether uh, there's nighttime, weather, <laughs> I see what, what you did we're there. We're experiencing, we're experiencing together. Everyone that's playing Anthem at a, at, a, at a moment is seeing the same thing. And this is what we mean when we talk about our world. It's a, it's a shared world that we all experience together. Oh, this but is so cool, mission, man. I, I can't to wait to play like this. Purchase. This is so neat. And this is a single player experience. I turn in my, my uh, rewards. I talk to some characters. That's so awesome. I experience the choices of my action. <laughs> and this is where your story I'm really just going to do that and breathe. fly around the whole game. And by doing it this way, we are, we're able to combine that impact and agency of a single player story with the fun of <clears> teaming up <throat> with your friends to play co-op in combat. And we're also nice. designing it so that we can add story for years to come. So one of the first things that we hear oh when... Oh gosh, um, it's literally going to be Destiny. they want to continue to play in our worlds when they've finished Mass Effect or Dragon Age, players yep. want more story. And so we've designed Anthem in a way that we can actually add more story for years to come. And it could be anything. A new moment... I don't know if I like that. Because that, that just love, means to me, or, based on uh, the experiences uh, I've seen in the past, is like they're going to give us a the very lore, baseless an entirely base game, and the story is going to be well, the DLC totally and the expansions for story. years to I come. I don't anybody out there is going to either. I don't know. So, Kathleen, I wanted to ask you... Just make uh, sequels. That's how you continue the story if it's worth it. what it's like to create a new world like Anthem? I don't know how I feel about that now. it's really exciting for us, and not just the writers, but all of the, the devs, the designers, the artists, is that we're creating something new and mysterious for players to discover. So at the heart of the premise of Anthem is a world left unfinished by the gods. But the gods <laughs> left behind the gods. massive tools. And those tools are in constant conflict with this unknowable force called the Anthem of Creation. And the chaos of those things those particle effects, though, other, um, means that the world is The game just looks so neat. I, I just feel like it's going to be, I really... Yeah, violent storms, mutated creatures... I hate that I can't monsters. look at something and it's believe in it anymore. Like, everything just feels too good, good to be true. To, uh, to be safe That's a really cool concept, I will now, admit. <laughs> I think a lot of players out there maybe don't stop to think about is just how much work goes into creating a new intellectual property or IP, as we've been saying. Now, you know, we've seen all these different creatures, and Mark, you mentioned the storms. What's the process of it creating a game like hmm. from scratch? Yeah, it's something we've done a few times at BioWare. Um, you know, and really the hardest part is getting started, just kind of <coughs> getting off the blank page. Uh, so what we try to do is we think about the new experiences that we're trying to unlock for players. So like, what is the fantasy fulfillment? What are the new things you actually get to go and do that are different from what you've played before? Yeah, I've so only played Mass Effect. I, Mass Effect is such a rich world, though. Things, it's like a um, universe, you know, too. Like a bunch of different planets and solar systems and races and you actually get to species and... Fictional universe that's they, they do, and then from what I've heard of Dragon Age, like Bioware that, does a great job. We still so need to build I have the faith in the stuff, fact that they can deliver a, a great story, like around you know, and a base style, tone, for what they want to create. I just don't want them to go down the, the destiny of, route. Of our new world. And then from there, we can actually go and build out every last detail. Yeah, and one of the uh, unique challenges for <clears throat> Anthem is that it's a world, an experience that's meant to feel alive, like it's happening uh, right now. And so the world is always changing, um, whether the uh, storm. And when I say Mass Effect, uh, I mean one through three. And, like, um, I don't even yeah, acknowledge it's a really Andromeda. Great to write for because what it means is it gives us the opportunity to drop into the world almost in real time a dramatic event that changes the world for everyone. And that could be anything from gameplay to lore. Okay. I mean, the, all of the moving parts in the dynamic world sound <clears> really cool the way that they sound like they're going to come together. But even though there's obviously a lot going on, it really all comes back to your character. So let's talk about who we're going to be playing as and why we're fighting these crazy beasts. <clears throat> so you are a freelancer. You hey, freelancer, red versus blue, good exo, shit. Ja these javelin exo suits. <laughs> and uh, you need those suits to survive and fight in this world because the world will kill you. Um, but on top of that, uh, our ancient rivals, the Dominion, have... Uh, they've discovered a way, they think, to weaponize the anthem of creation, and so um, we need to stop them and protect the free people of Tarsus. Now, Tarsus. I've heard you call this 
power armor, a couple different things. Is it, a, is it a suit? Is it a javelin? Like, what's the what's the canon term here? We call them javelins, and there are four. Okay. And uh, they each have a unique ability. I like there's the slim the ranger, one. Okay, so ranger. And then there's the colossus. The tank right there. The interceptor, and right. finally the storm. The storm. Yeah. So uh, that's pretty each dope. Javelin gives you a different way to play the game. Uh, but the thing to remember is, like Kathleen said, you're not your suit. You are a freelancer, <laughs> Genji. Right? Pilot, which means you can decide which suit you want to use based on your mood, based on the mission you want to engage in, or the or the javelins that. That's your pretty are dope. Using. Um, so, really, what this allows us to do is, we built the suits to look like they're built from the materials of the world, uh, so they each have their own unique abilities. So let's right. take a look at uh, the ranger now. Okay. The ranger is a more nice. generalized Gameplay. suit, uh, able to uh, to do a lot of different things. Oh. Uh, use really designed for up close and personal combat, one-on-one uh, -on -one for the most part. Nice. The Colossus is heavier, more yep, specialized, the tank. <laughs> able to really pack heavy in artillery big that let them devastate the battlefield. Holy fuck! Whoa, that's a lot of damage. I, I'm just gonna say the storm looks like it's gonna be my favorite, and I'm sure you guys out there are picking your faves right now. Too. Yeah, I um, like the. I, so the I think the interceptor awesome, looks neat. I don't know what he does. Questions right now. So Casey tweeted, some of you may have seen, asking for uh, people out there to send us your questions, and the first one is gonna be from at its sweet Nicole, who asks. As a player who is all about making their character their own, what kind of customization options will be available in Anthem? Hmm. Yeah, so we really want players to express themselves both through customizing oh, okay. the this way is their, cool. their uh, Please don't put like your don't please don't have loot weapons, boxes in the game. Please don't go the uh, the, the bright engrams uh, jobs as well as changing route, the actual, please. Uh, geometry and thank you. Itself. Was that a Mass Effect inspired to to do this as well. skin I just saw? And because you're going to be using a javelin for a long period of time, huh. we really want you to be able to make it your own. <laughs> the dab I emote. I that up because actually, <laughs> Jay Legato has a question connected to customization. Monetization. How, when, Yes. Box, Thank you. Thank yeah, you. So we are going to have uh, some cosmetics and vanity items that you'll be able to purchase, but you're always going to know what you're going to buy before you uh, spend any money on it. So no loot boxes, no ability to pay for power. Yay. That's so good. So that means no ability to spend money on gameplay advantage at all within Anthem. But even more important than that, we want to make sure that Anthem is an immersive experience that feels like it's complete from the get-go. So that means a main story, a big open world, and an ongoing service that provides new content for a long period of time. New story, new, new, uh, new experiences for everyone. Okay. Well, I'm glad to hear that I can make my javelin pink. That's really all I wanted to know, <laughs> I'm going to be honest. All right, Casey. We talked earlier about this being a co-op experience. So can you tell me a little bit about how the team gameplay in Anthem is going to work? Yeah, it, it really is about, you know, the fun of teaming up as, as a team of superheroes and working together. That's super so, cool. This um, reminds me of, of Evolve, together, but Evolve classes, never really, so, like, you know, made it, you know what I mean? The, the Colossus. Like, the four you know, teammates working together, gameplay, if we can each have having independent skills so, and abilities that come together, being really you know what strong, I mean? You know, in melee combat. And then here you've got the ranger oh my gosh. shooting down from above. Combo, combo, and combo! Combos and special Jesus Christ. But I can't I eat any more is, combos. You know, run around, you're swimming and flying as well. That's so dope. Look at that. At the I love the environment more than anything. How do you balance multiplayer with single player storytelling? So Anthem's really built around trying to combine the uh, the impact of having your own personal story mm -hmm. with the fun of playing with other players. <clears throat> but we really want to make sure that uh, that playing with other people feels like a choice. So for people that want to just experience the story, we're, you're going to be able to do that. Now, okay. going out into an open world like this uh, by yourself is going to be a little bit more challenging than, <clears throat> uh, than if the team of four people. What the heck is going on? What the heck is that giant robot thing? To be fun, even for people that don't normally engage in this kind of thing. So I really hope that everyone at least gives co-op a try. Huh. So it's, okay, you can play by so yourself you or with people. If you solo, you can, but that's good. it's just going to be a little bit more difficult. Um, well, I know you all are on the edges of your seats. How about I mean, I'm, a I'm, little I'm, gameplay? Yes, please. Yeah, I mean, that? that's what we wanted right, from the so, get-go. Um, Kathleen, I think you're going to set this up for us? I will. So, um, Ooh, the, you and your friends have decided to play a mission called Scars and Villainy. The Scars have put together an acid-based super weapon, so you got to take them out. Okay. So, you start in the Strider, which is like a giant walker, and it's your forward base of operations. 
conversations. You have a conversation <clears throat> nice, nice, with nice, your nice, crew, nice, 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 nice. Only took Bay 20 minutes, Owen, but we're and here. Oh, and he's going to talk us through the mission as we as we experience it here. Um, and yeah, then you just get into your javelin suit and you head out with your friends. All right. Well, thank you so much, Mark, Good shit. Casey, Kathleen, for talking to me I'm about I'm a bit more today. confident about uh, this game. Go ahead and roll I will say. Now. Enjoy, everybody. I mean, I still want to see more before I'm sold on if I'm buying it or not. Okay, here we go. Some gameplay. Some juicy gameplay. EA Bioware. Oh my gosh, is this tight? Uh, is this 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 literally reminds me of Horizon Zero Dawn? <laughs> Freelancer. <time laughs> the robotic. Bronco, uh, Brontosaurus. Kind of oh, the, the tall necks. Weapon. That's what it reminded so, me of. Find where they're making this garbage and shut it all down. How's the audio, guys? Hopefully, you guys can hear it. Oh, that's so cool. She actually like gets in the. They actually get in the suits. Pretty dope. Like, look at this. This looks so awesome, man. I love how the world looks. Oh, and you see like the the animals and the wildlife. The, 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 oh my gosh, this looks so cool. Audio's good? Okay. Oh! Owen, what's the plan here? Picking up loads of scars nearby. Oh, look at that. Area, but, uh, <laughs> be careful. Investigate Blackshore. Scars and villainy. Clear scar patrols. Okay, here we go. Some enemies. Hunters. Damn, look at the DPS on this guy. Holy fuck. All right, so I think this is the Ranger and the Colossus that we're seeing right now. Right. Yeah, Ranger Getting Colossus. Okay. I want to see the Interceptor. That's the one I'm interested in. Look at all the weapons. Oh, and the, and the turrets. Better move quickly. Wyverns? Oh, shoot. Oh, they're flying enemies. That's pretty neat. Go underwater. What the heck is that? Abyssal lock? Is that a boss? That literally looks like a boss. <laughs> go in the water! Go in the water! <laughs> oh my god! This looks so cool! That looks so dope. Oh, uh, yeah, definitely the tank. <laughs> I might play as the Colossus, actually. I'm, I, I'm a, I, I prefer, like, support roles when I play my games. Who's this one? Is this, the, is this still the ranger? Wait, something's odd. Yeah, I think so. Look, you? This looks so neat, man. Of energy? They're echoes from the Anthem of Creation. Loads of scars nearby. Be careful. Oh, I love that. I love the fact you just... Like, I wonder what walking around would, would feel like, even though you have the option to fly around. Oh, shit, you got a flamethrower? A scrapper? That's another enemy type. Elite scrappers, so there's different variants of the same enemies, it seems. Do damage! Legendary Enforcer. Return them to the relic. You've got to silence <gasps> the bomb. Oh, this is the storm! <laughs> Look at that <laughs> It does no damage. <laughs> he probably has like a bunch of like magic or elemental at attacks. Oh, that's neat. Relic silence. Disaster averted. Do you think we get a bonus for... Wait, something's happening. There's a storm right there. Oh! What the hell was that? Nani? I think that was whatever laid all the eggs around here. The sound came from below your position. Oh, damn. <clears throat> Time to investigate! Oh, uh, dude, look at that. He's got like an elemental aura right. when he flies around. There's a train of this acid gunk leading down. Follow it. We That's should find the storm. So okay, so this is the storm right here. Please stay on this guy. I want to see what he does. Oh. It's quiet. Too quiet. <gasps> okay, scared the hell out of me. This literally looks like the Destiny. What's the Destiny class? I forgot what it's called. Oh, what the hell are you? That's a cool design. Oh no! You've got to be kidding me! I thought we were gonna see an epic boss fight just now. Damn, I'm intrigued. I'm intrigued. I can't wait to see more of this. Yeah, the warlock. There you go. That's what it was. I'm so hyped, you guys. That was really exciting. Yeah, and that was uh, that was actually just a short version of the full demo that we brought here to LA. So oh damn it! 
come by it's the there i thought it was gonna be like an online demo i would have been so happy game live so i'm sure the question on everyone's minds when do we get to play so anthem comes out february 22nd next year on uh, Xbox One, PlayStation 4, and PC. Okay. The market calendars, everybody. Fire I might get it. I might get it for so PC. Again to Casey and the entire Bioware team. I know you guys have. We gotta wait another eight months outside, for this so game. Jesus. Right. Give it there. up for Casey Hudson, everybody. Casey Hudson. At least he's on the team, though. That's like the best thing that you can take away I from this. I also want to give a big thank you to all of the developers who showcased their games today and everybody working hard at Shout the Shout out to Sea of Solitude. Around sea of Solitude and Anthem were probably the two games that I, looked, I, I enjoyed seeing the most. Now, some of what you 